All right, let's prepare for the first speech you'll have in this class, your introduction speech. And this is a speech that's essentially meant to be an icebreaker, um, and it's kind of designed so you can feel what it's going to be like when you are in front of that camera and in front of your six audience members. All right. So what I'm going to do is give you the guidelines for this upcoming speech, and then I'll give you the, requ the, you know, the questions for the speech that you have to answer so that you can build the body and the content of it. All right. The time limit for this speech is one to three minutes, which means one minute minimum, three minute maximum, okay? So when you're practicing, obviously try to aim for the middle, two minutes. That way, when you do have an audience in front of you, you know, it kind of compensates for if you speak at 100 miles an hour or two miles an hour, it gives you a one minute window of forgiveness. So one to three minutes, all right. Here are the questions that you have to answer in this speech, okay? And the answer to these questions will obviously help you form a narrative. And I'll give you an example of a, um, a speech with a good narrative and a bad narrative. It'll be a separate video, but make sure you watch it so you kind of get a taste of what's going to happen. All right. Here are the four questions. Question one. If you had to either keep all of your old memories or never be able to create new ones, which one would you pick and why? Again, if you either had to, if you can either keep your old, old memories or never be able to create new ones, which one will you pick? All right, and then tell me why. Question two. What makes you unique? Now, what I mean by that is uniqueness. This is an answer that needs to be specific. Insofar as, if you say, what makes me unique is that I love to help people, I'm a good person, and I just can't help but... Uh, make people happy. All right, well, that sounds like just about everybody. Um, do you love animals? Do you uh, just can't get enough of sports, hunting, and fishing? Well, that's just about everybody in the South. So that's not really unique. You need to literally think of something that is specific to you and nobody else. And the reason I make you answer that question is because I know one time in your life you have said this. Well, I'm not like everybody else. I'm different. Good. Now prove it. Prove that you're different. Tell me how. Question three is what would you do differently in life if nobody judged you? So what would you do differently in life if nobody judged you. All right. And the last question is, what academic question do you want answered by the end of your college career? So again, and I'll tell you what I mean by academic question, but what academic question do you want answered by the end of your college career? Now, here's what I define academic question as. Any question that can only be answered in a college classroom, right? So, and plus, if you think you already know the answer, pick something else. <laughs> and here's what I mean by academic question. Not only is it something that can only be answered in a college classroom, but, and what, the reason I say that is because it requires research and an actual intellectual curiosity. So typical questions that students have given in the past that meet the criteria are, you know, what is the highest form of good? If everyone views reality differently, then is there one true reality? How can I learn how to do my taxes to get one over on the IRS? <laughs> I had one student say that the other day. It was pretty funny. So like I said, these are questions that can only be answered in a college environment. Like, how do I gain 
political power and keep political power? Or is it odd that there has been a Bush or a Clinton in the White House for the last 20 years except for Obama? Right? These are the kinds of questions that will satisfy question four. Right? So, now when you have come up with the answer to all of these questions, you then need to mold and shape them so that it forms a narrative. Remember that seventh key. Because if all you do is say, here's the answer to this, here's the answer to that, here's the answer to this one, that's like you're speaking like a grocery list, okay? And that's a grocery list is just as exciting as it sounds. So remember the seventh key narrative in the next video. Like I said, I'll show you an example of a speech done in a proper narrative and one that's not. So nonetheless, this is your introduction speech. Don't forget your eight keys, right? your attention-getting device, the transitions, tone, command, all that good stuff, and don't forget your conclusion. Right? So you start it with your attention-getting device, then the body of your speech will be the answers to these questions, and then you'll end it with a, your two-part conclusion. All right? So this is your first speech. It's designed to be pretty easy, so um, don't overlook it, all right? Until then, make sure you watch the next video where you can get an example of these speeches, and then let's, uh, let's keep going. Let's keep pressing on.